Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a bucket hat. Now this one is made out of quilting fabric. You can use just about anything you want. This one was made to fit my daughter's head and unfortunately she couldn't be here to model it for you. But on this one, I changed the length of the brim just to give it a little different look. So you can make this brim any length that you want. Now I made several for my husband. Let's take a look at those. This bucket hat is made out of camouflage fabric. I bought this fabric off of Amazon. If you're interested in the fabric, click on the link below your YouTube screen. This bucket hat was made out of an old pair of denim jeans that Manny gave me. Before we get started on the hat, I just want to mention there will be a giveaway in this video, so stay tuned. Now let's get started on the hat. You'll need the following fabrics. Fabric for the outside, one-third yard, and lining, one-third yard. I'm also using heavy iron-on fusible interfacing and I'm using Pellon and just Pellon has a variety of heavy iron-on interfacing so use whichever that you can find. You can either get it in packages or off of the bolt and you'll need enough to cover uh, this so make sure it's going to be as large as this piece of fabric. The very first step you need to do is measure the size of your head with a tape measure and make sure it's just above the eyes and just above the ears. Once you've determined the size of your head, which is now going to be called the circumference, so this is your head measurement, wherever you see red are numbers you're going to plug into this little math calculation. This is my husband's head size. So his was 23. Now subtract 2 inches. That left me with my circle size that I'm going to cut for the top of the hat, 21 inches. So now take th this number and plug it in here with this circumference number. So now you need to find the radius so divide this number by 6.28 and I advise you to just use one of these little cheap calculators to help you do this because I could never do it without it. So now that equals 3.4. Now I'm going to round it up to 3.5. So here's my circle circumference is now 21 and here's my radius 3.5 now draw your pattern pieces so you're going to draw three different pieces the top side panel and brim to draw the pattern for the circle take a piece of paper and fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And now take a little ruler that you might have. Now this just happens to be three and a half inches. I got really lucky. So I've put my ruler there and you're going to put little marks three and a half inches out. Remember you're plugging in your numbers and you're going to keep doing that until you get all the way around. So here's the center of my circle Here's the radius distance, which is three and a half. Now cut the circle out. So you can use scissors. I'm just going to use an old rotary cutter blade and cut your circle out. Right on this pattern piece you just made, this is the top, cut one for your fabric for the outside, cut one for the lining and then one for the interfacing and I recommend you write all of that on your pattern piece. To draw the side panel 
take your circumference number that's the one after you div you took away two inches so mine was 21 divide it by four and that left me with five and one quarter inches draw a rectangle five and a quarter inches and make it three and a half inches deep this way. After you cut the rectangle out, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and open it up, and draw lines on the fold. Then cut on the lines but don't cut all the way up to the top. Leave about an eighth of an inch. Place this on top of another piece of paper and spread them apart one quarter inch. And I would advise you to use a little ruler and then put tape on it. So use some tape. So spread each one of them one quarter inch. On this line, or excuse me, on this side here, just draw a line all the way down. Up on this side, this side, and this side. Draw lines one half inch above. So just keep moving this over, draw a line. Move it over again, draw a line. And eventually, you'll have this little curved area here, then you would just connect the lines. Do the same thing on this side and then down here at the bottom. After you've cut it out, write fold on here. This is going to be placed on the fold of your fabric. Write on its side panel. Cut two pieces for the outside of the hat cut two for the lining, and cut two of the interfacing. Measure the distance on this curved edge down here. So I'm going to turn it around so hopefully you can see better. Take a tape measure and just hold it around the bottom edge. Mine comes out to six and a half inches. Use that number, mine was six and a half, and draw a rectangle six and a half inches by three inches. Cut that rectangle out. So you need to draw one, two, three, four lines. Mine were approximately one and a quarter inches, maybe slightly more. Cut on the lines, and again, do not cut it all the way through. Go up to about an eighth of an inch away from this edge and spread them out just like you did on the side panel. So spread them out one quarter inch. Then add a half inch seam area and another half inch seam area and then one here. Write fold on this side. Also write brim on it. Cut two for the fabric for the outside. Cut two of the lining fabric and two interfacing. When you are cutting your fabric out, remember to place the edges here and here on the folded edges of your fabric. So you'll cut these out, fold your fabric again, and cut one more of each. On the fabric for the outside, fuse your interfacing on the back. So follow package instructions for fusing. You'll need a hot iron with steam and a damp cloth. On the side panel pieces on the back side, mark where the center is on both pieces. Do the same thing on the brim. Take your top piece for the lining and for the outside, fold it in half, and mark the fold. Fold it in half again. Mark the fold. And then transfer that mark right onto 
the other side so that you have four points marked and remember do that on the fabric for the outside also stitch the side panel sections together and the brim and you're doing half inch seams at each end do the same for your lining pieces after stitching press all of your seams open on both the lining and the fabric for the outside take the top section and the side panel section match your markings so there was a red dot here match it to the seam then match the other two markings on the opposite sides of each other so all in all you will have four pins in place continue placing pins all the way around and I would put your pins fairly close together because what you're trying to do is prevent pin tucks from happening when you are stitching if you're having a problem getting the side panel piece to lay down onto the top circle piece I recommend that along this edge right here you do very tiny little clips no more than an eighth of an inch long and you will find that will help relax the fabric so that you can pin it after you have finished pinning then stitch one half inch seam all the way around after stitching around then go ahead and clip up to your stitch line be careful not to cut through your stitches pin or clip the brim to the side panel and then stitch one half inch seam all the way around when you're done stitching the fabric together for the outside this is what the hat looks like let's move on to the lining stitch the lining together in the same way except when you stitch the brim piece onto the side panel leave an opening that will be used later to turn the front side out have the fabric for the outside of the bag facing inside so basically the back side is now facing out on the lining fabric the front side of the fabric is facing out insert the lining inside of the bag then match your side seams clip everything along the top or use pins stitch one half inch seam all the way around use small scissors and do little clips all the way around the edge pull the lining out then reach in your opening and begin turning the hat front side out to close the opening up turn the raw edges inside one half inch pin and then stitch close to the edge all the way across push the lining inside after pushing the lining inside I recommend you pin your edges make sure that the lining is really rolled in away from that outer edge so that it doesn't show smooth your lining on the inside and then pin the seam that attaches the side panel and the brim make sure you've also pinned that lining on the inside last step is to stitch a series of rows mine are close to a half inch apart you can make it a fourth of an inch apart I chose the width of my presser foot I recommend you start at one of the seams stitch all the way around then lift your presser foot move the hat over and stitch another row let me show you what it looks like on the inside because it's probably a little easier to see the stitching so this is what it looks like 
Let's go to my sewing machine and I'll so show you how to do it. To make it easier to do the stitching on the brim, remove any storage compartment that you may have on the arm of this sewing machine. That way as you stitch, this is rolling under and it's just really easy to feed it through. So I have my needle on my sewing machine over to the left. So if you have that option on your sewing machine, I would use that. And then I have the inner edge of my presser foot right on the edge of the hat. So I recommend you start at the seam, one of the side seams, and just begin to stitch. Now, some of you sometimes make comments about how come you don't remove the pins? Well, sometimes that's really hard for me because my right hand doesn't work. So I just try to stitch slow over the pins. But if you're able to remove your pins easily, I recommend that you do that. So you would go all the way around and then when you get to your starting position, cut the thread off, lift up your presser foot, move it over the same width as whatever you're using, whether it's quarter inch or half inch, and start a new row. And keep going round and round until you get up to the seam here. Here it is, it's all done. Once you've got your pattern made, you can use it over and over again. And this hat really didn't take very long to stitch together. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, it's giveaway time. The Sewing Room Channel is giving away this bundle of fabric. There's enough fabric in here to make this Scotty Dog pillow. In this bag are pre-cut pieces of fabric for the quilt block. For instructions on how to make the Scotty Dog, the link is appearing in the upper right hand corner. There are just three easy steps to enter this giveaway. Step one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Step two, follow me on Instagram at The Sewing Room Channel. And step three, leave a comment below about your favorite sewing project. And the instructions for this giveaway and the link to my Instagram account are listed below the YouTube screen. For more beginners sewing projects, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. If you're not receiving those email notifications, go to your cell phone or iPad, click on settings and turn notifications on. This is Scotty, this is Maria, this is Jamie, and this is Manny. Bye-bye, see you later.